there it is. You know, it's a Friday. There it is. All right. So, yeah. So that, I knew that was probably going to come sooner or later. All right. Uh, base is dropped, and it's another round of soccer down here. And it is uh, all of us kind of looking at uh, what's going on in Dusseldorf right now. And not necessarily a surprise. But uh, for the show this morning, I think that we are pretty much going to be keeping an eye on everything going on in Germany. We'll talk about it at the half, and we will keep an eye on what's going on right now. Uh, and, you know, part of the idea here with, uh, with this particular group is that, you know, you want to be challenged with these games. You really do. And uh, uh, set piece to the back post is clear, and I figured what we would do for today is get everybody's thoughts as we go here in real time without necessarily calling every single piece of the action because we might get in trouble for something like that. We don't want that. But uh, figured what we would do is keep an eye on what's going on and uh, talk it through and kind of uh, let everybody know what you're thinking about what's going on in Germany and with the national team and get you ready for the weekend and and all those kinds of things. So there, there is a plenty going on, and we'll we'll kind of preview the weekend too in the, those moments where there's nothing going on. So we're going to be kind of uh, drifting in and out and discussing things. Uh, hopefully, uh, Jared Smith will join us with his thoughts, and we will just kind of work our way through. Yeah, we'll kind of sorta because, like I said, we don't want to get in trouble, and so basically, it's just kind of. Looking, peering, analyzing, letting us know uh, what's going on. So, uh, for the, di- I, oh, so I guess maybe that's a thought. So, what I should probably do is get onto the Discord and see what folks are saying there and kind of apply it forward. So, there's an idea for you. So, I guess it's kind of like the, uh, the, the multi screen experience here. So, uh, all right, so let's see where, watch along. Okay, so maybe uh, as we go here, uh, we'll kind of go drift, uh, drifting back and forth. So, uh, yes, Abby, yeah, there, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm still kind of learning this whole multi-screen experience thing. So uh, kind of working our way through uh, everything going on, and I'm going to apologize up front if I have to duck out for a minute, because I've got a, uh, I got a, I got a sick somebody who's a little under the weather. And we went out uh, at three this morning. We went out at four thirty this morning, and I think that it had to do with a farmer's dog. So, uh, yeah. So uh, if I have to duck out and I got to play like elevator music or something for a couple of minutes, then uh, the idea would be. Uh, for uh, hopefully just to talk amongst yourselves for a couple of minutes and then uh, work our way through everything. So, uh, by the way, good morning and uh, glad you guys are hang- hanging out here on a uh, on a freestyle Friday. And this way we get to kind of uh, go over things. But but uh, I mean I know that initially uh, Airborne DJs in uh, the, the uh, Twitch pitch. And so I will probably work my way back and kind of deal with both Discord and Twitch pitch and work our way through. Uh, you know, the the outfits are OK for me. Um, uh, you know, I'd like when we were talking about it yesterday when Bart Keeler was on and there is a. uh Let's see. How would you best phrase it? I guess uh, an independent, uh, the the Olive in York, the the one guy that did all of the different mock-ups and the the Declaration of Independence kit, the the black and gold. I love that. You know, I'd love for something like that to be in, a, not necessarily in a World Cup competition, but in a uh, you know like a gold cup or something like that. Uh, and like I said, when we get to the end of the first half, we'll go through some of the moments of the first half, and most of them are, are moments for Japan. And so we'll kind of look at that and we'll see what's uh, what's going on. Uh, yeah, I know people interrupting during a friendly South Georgia. And like I said, I'm working my way through the discord and into. Yeah, I like the warm up jerseys. I mean, you know, I'm kind of a I'm kind of a tie dye splotchy kind of a guy. So, I mean, I can definitely understand that. Um, 
you know, uh, I really what I should have done was I'm uh, full disclosure. I am shifting uh, my uh, stuff from my storage locker from one business to another, because frankly, if you can get twice as much space for less then you're going to do it. And I found the other day, once again, there's the, the back line of Japan anticipating what was going on with the, the launch forward by the U S like I said, we'll get into this as we go. Um, I found one of my 1992 Barcelona grateful dead Lithuania t-shirts. And so that just tells you, you know, where, where my brain is when it comes to getting stuff. And so, uh, you know, anything splotchy, anything tie dye. You see, I'm a kind of guy that like the denim stuff from the nineties. I like the denim kit, but like I said, that's just me. I might be in a minority opinion, but give me something that's new and different. Uh, instead of the, what was it? The stay puffed marshmallow look, uh, that, uh, uh, Alex Pacine had brought up in the discord. So yeah, uh, 39 possession losses. And so we'll get into those numbers. That reminds me, Tom, I've got to get into sofa score and kind of look at the numbers for the first half and see what, uh, what they all are. So that's Nations League. Uh, let's get into, let me see if I can find uh, how about world instead of actually by country here. So amateur, Japan, uh, Japan amateur. Uh, this, is, this is what happens. This is the beauty of, of live searching here. So uh, looking at, uh, that's USL championship. And where's like world? world here we go world friendlies um all right so with what is going on right now international matches uh, we'll get into stats as we can find them as we get ready for the half and you know looking at the starting lineups we'll get into that in just a little bit remember uh christian polisic rec uh, received a knock in training and he'll get reevaluated by the uh, match at mercia and we'll see what happens with that uh your back line started with uh, sam vines aaron long walker zimmerman that was your pairing at the back serginio dest on the right della torre adams weston mckinney and then up top reina ferrera and brendan aronson and so uh, looking at those numbers, uh, that was that was your uh, that was your look so far with uh, the starting lineup there for Japan. It was uh, Kamada and Dyson Meda up top, and I know that Jarrett is incredibly high on uh, Dyson Meda. Uh, fourth, the uh, in net Gonda in net Sakai Yoshida Nakayama Tomiyasu uh, at the back. Ito Morita. Wataru Endo and uh, Takafusa Kubo in your midfield with Kamada and Meta up top. So, uh, all right. So now that we have officially gone to commercial, uh, let's talk about the first half. And no, it, it wasn't good. But what I would maintain in all of this, and I know that uh, you know, I wanted to have you know everybody commenting either on Discord now that I found it, or on Twitch Pitch as I found it. I would posit that this is what you want. And what I mean by that is you want to be challenged in a, in a game state like this so you know what you have to work on. We knew that Japan coming in was going to be a team that was going to pressure you. And I was looking at, uh, you know, and I was doing my standard, uh, you know, I was doing my standard right along with uh, all of the action, W-R-I-T-E, right along and kind of get the feel for what's going on. But now that Jared is here, go ahead and bring Jared in. Okay, Jared, now that hey, we're, we're officially at commercial here at halftime, and uh, I guess what the plan was today was to kind of have uh, Discord up. Now that Discord was, was chatting with itself, and then we have a Twitch pitch going on at the same time and some folks commenting on both. I figured this would kind of be what we were looking at today is just kind of doing a uh, – a pseudo watch along without really getting into any trouble and uh, seeing what the United States was going to be facing with Japan. And they knew what they were going to be facing and they knew it was going to be tough with the pressure from Japan. And that shows the first 45. It did. And this is um, this conversation I, or a point I try to make on Twitter. This is a thing we do. And it's, it's not just a U.S. national team thing. It's a discourse thing we do in all aspects. 
as much as we talk about uh, the U.S. underwhelming, yeah. man, Japan came in with a Japan showed up with a plan mm -hmm. and said, "We have a plan. Here's our plan. We're going to execute our plan." And they've they've done it really damn well. Yeah. Um, man, Japan has uh, Japan's put you under pressure, and the U.S. hasn't responded to it nope. the way they needed to. Yeah. Like that's, that's where it's at. Japan's I mean, always Japan it has a lot of pressure they provide. Uh -huh. They're super damn technical. Um, and they are just they're going to put you in a special hell if they can. Well, and as I was going through the starting 11s before I got into uh, just kind of breaking things down, as I wrote in my write along, as I am always want to do with matches, you've always been high on Kenta Meta. And I wanted you to kind of explain well, what you mean, Dyson? Dyson Meta, sorry. Uh, Dyson Meta, and you've always been high on Dyson Meta. What does he bring to the table, and what have you seen from him in the first 45? Uh, so, it doesn't have a goal, but Dyson Meta is that dude who, he, if you're looking for that striker or that winger who's just like going to put up absurd pressure numbers, that's what Dyson Meta gives you. Um, he is not great at finishing. But his pressure work and his athleticism is insane. But that goes for pretty much the entire front line of Japan. If you watch a move, like, and and they're they're still a very technical nation. Um, like with the way they play, yeah, Jason uh, saying, you know, we we knew what they were gonna do. It isn't a surprise. Yeah, that's the thing about it. Is like you knew what they were gonna do, but sometimes you got to make yourself uncomfortable, mm -hmm. and that's that can happen. So. Good on USA for scheduling this instead of scheduling like a layup of a game. Um, where like, you know, you didn't schedule like the Falkland Islands. Yes. Or the Faroe Islands. Like True. schedule yourself against another World Cup opponent who's gonna make you uncomfortable. And then take something away from that, which is good, I think. I think you're you're in that situation right now. Yes, you want it to go better, but you you put yourself up against something that makes you uncomfortable. Get out of your comfort zone as you have a World Cup coming up in a couple months. Yeah. Um, but that entire front line meta included, those guys are very aggressive mm -hmm. and they, they read the game really well. You know, they can jump those lines and you know, we saw that. I mean, they could have had two or three goals. Um, Tyson made it just can't finish. God bless him. Um, <laughs> but we've seen the way they can jump. They can jump the passing lanes. Yeah. And we've seen the way they move. Okay. Now I hope they continue that for the next 45 because that's good training for them, but it's good training for the U.S. as well. Because now you're seeing something of, this is something we need to work on. Okay, cool. Now we're in live fire drills with this pressure. Show me what you guys can do. Yeah, and I know a lot of folks are looking at uh, Aaron Long and Walker Zimmerman specifically. Uh, Zimmerman had the, the awful turnover. But once again, that comes from the pressure that Japan has been giving in the first 45. He had the turnover in the 13th where Matt Turner turned around and ended up eventually uh, saving the shot. But, yeah, I mean, this has been this has been something that, you know, you look at guys who are put in the, the national team situation and, uh, you know, Aaron Long and the Red Bulls, they have always been of a situation where the ball has cooties and they don't want anything to do with it. Nashville pretty much, uh, you know, they, they build differently than what you have. And so what you're doing is you're exposing these players who aren't used to having to, to do a natural buildup to be ready for these kinds of situations. And so to your point, that no doubt, this is what you want to do. You, you want to schedule yourself against a team that is as technical as Japan, that is as tightly uh, put together philosophically as Japan is and have everything squared away in the first 45. Uh, Nick's pass is completed in the attacking third, Japan 35, USA 4. Yeah, when Japan is constantly on you in the first 45 minutes and you end up trying to sit there and skip lines and, and bomb it long, that's what you're going to get in the first 45. And I think that there was the, you know, you had the one chance with uh, Dest and Jesus Ferreira back in the eighth minute, which uh, had the, uh, the Ferreira header was high, and I know that the knives will be out with Ferreira for not uh, finishing that chance. And I've seen them on the Bird app, you know, in the first 45, where so and so would have completed that one, so and so would have put that one away. And so uh, we didn't even get to we didn't even get to 90 minutes in, and a lot of folks are are as completely 
you know, that they're looking at this effort and anticipating that this is how things are going to be in Qatar. And it doesn't have to be like, yeah, like this is, uh, you know, everybody's doing scouting. You know, if you watched, um, you know, if you watched Wales, there's probably things you're going to want to watch about Wales and England. Okay, that's something we can exploit. Everybody's looking for something to exploit because it's what they do. Um, you got to see how they react to this. Um, it sucks not having, honestly, like a guy like a Miles Robinson or yes. um, who who's used to that system. Or you make the trade off with like, I would love to see. I'd love to see forty-five minutes of a guy like CCV, yeah, who's been playing out of the back for the last year plus under pressure at times, and see how they react to it. Because we've seen now, we know, like you know what Zimmerman is is good at. He's, he's good in those one v one moments. Great in the air, offensively and defensively. He can be a stone wall. Um, I want to see how they figure out the rest of this. Yeah. Now, now you're in a situation where, and it's just a friendly, um, so I don't think it's the end of the world, but it's just a situation where you're watching it now and you're like, okay, how do you, okay, now we've seen something. Mm-hmm. How do you all react to it? Correct. How, how do the players react to being uncomfortable? Yeah, and but like, and I think that that's the main point here is that you want to be uncomfortable or you should want to be uncomfortable in games like this that are friendlies that are a part of uh, challenge cups that have to do with uh, beers and breweries um, on the bench. You have uh, Sean Johnson, Ethan Horvath today, EPB, Reggie Cannon, Yedlin McKenzie. And then you've got uh, Jordan Morris, Malik Tillman, Kellen Acosta, Joe Scally, Johnny, Ariel LaPepe and Sargent. So that's what you're looking at with this roster, possibly in the second 45, and, uh, yeah, it's been, you know, I, I think that you look at uh, what we've seen and to your point, I, and let me go through what uh, you want to be challenged. I want to see how you adjust. Uh, Airborne DJ on Twitch pitch. Wales and England over there saying, okay, cool. Thanks, Japan. This will be easy taking this team out, just pressing a bit. Uh, and a lot of folks are. As long uh, as you can press effectively. Yes. You, you, you try and, pr- it, it, uh, to your point, if you, uh, if you press and you do it poorly, then you turn into what is the 2022 version of the Charleston battery, mm-hmm. which is my favorite test subject for let's just be a, let's just play a, as a pressing team. Okay. But if you don't have the guys to do that, correct. And you try and do it, you're going to die a very ignoble death. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it is going, it is going to be, uh, it is not going to be pretty, and it's not going to be pretty consistently, and you're going to be giving up a lot of numbers on the board. Uh, Jason, CCV is not available. He got hurt last week in training in Scotland. Right. Um, so, that would be an interesting one to bring in, 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 though, because yeah. he does fit that mold of, like, the ball-playing center back. Yes. Um, that'd be an interesting guy to bring on in that situation. Same with Miles. Yep. Um, especially as much as we've seen Miles play with the ball uh, for Atlanta United. Mm-hmm. Um, because you know he can be that one v one guy, but he's also comfortable building yeah. out of the back. He's comfortable under pressure, and you hate not having him in these situations. Yeah, and uh, I know that. Uh, uh, let's see, Jason Nix was looking at, uh, you know, having a, a Brandon Vasquez available, but you know when we get into the Brandon Vasquez discussion, And it was something that uh, we got into discussing with Bart yesterday when Bart was was here. And it's a topic that we've had. I'm surprised Bart hasn't crashed out of anger yet. I know. (laughs) I know. (laughs) Uh, Waiting for the door to get kicked down like Bart to come in here full Kramer. uh, Yeah, well, I mean, I told Bart, you know, kind of like I I told Bart next week, you know, Monday and Tuesday that the forbidden door is open. So if he wants to if he wants to be Okada. The Stargate is open, Bart. Yes, it is. So uh, if uh, if Bart wants to to send a note, then, yeah, hey, Forbidden Door is open, and he can be here as much as he wants during the international window, considering Soccer for U.S. Pod has been tackling all this stuff. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, you, you're looking at this, and, I, and uh, Jason Nix is talking about Brandon Vasquez. That was the point that I was wanting to circle back to. Yeah. Brandon Vasquez, and I know that a lot of folks are looking at his current form with FC Cincinnati as your indicator that he should be 
running the point of the spear in international competitions and being there for the United States. Frankly, yes, I know he's had the hot hand, and I know that that's something that we all look at when it comes to who we're starting, but but the lack of international experience for Brandon Vasquez is the the, the catch-22 here. Yes, he's your hot hand, but he hasn't had it in international competition, and yes, I know, how can he have it in international competition if he's not called up? But right now that you're this, this is a bureaucracy part, trap, is what I'm hearing. Yeah, oh, well, I, I need you to fill them out, f- fill out film four, uh, file four. Okay, but I need file five. Well, you can't have it without filling out four. But then, yes. how do I get five? Well, you have to have four. Yes, exactly. And so, um, if we were further away from a World Cup, I would, you know, I would have anticipated that with Brandon Vasquez and said hot hand that he would have had more opportunities to get to be in that striker position but right now you're just too close to it and you're going with what you have and greg berhalter traditionally has gone with what you know and what he knows and what he's comfortable with he has his guys and brandon vasquez is not one of his guys and he's just not going to parachute him into this situation and be there as a late addition for the men's national team as you're heading to the World Cup. So that's at least that's my perspective on the Brandon Vasquez situation. It's just his lack of his lack of file four to get to file five or get, get to file five. That's just where I am with it. Yeah, it's just and it's frustrating because like you see you, you especially people, you know, MLS people who watch MLS have watched him this year and it's like you've had this mindset of like, oh, you're looking for a striker? We have one. Mm -hmm. It's very good. Do you want him? You don't. You you don't. Okay. Well, don't 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 complain to me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We Uh, told you where he. We gave you his address. Yes. Uh, And uh, yes, Jason X. Joseph Heller has entered the chat, and so I guess that means that uh, Burhalter is Scheisskopf. That's the only thing I can think of off the off the top of my head. Uh, that's the one reference that sticks with me from that book and uh, the movie with Art Garfunkel from 1970, I believe. Um, Abby, our passing sucks, and you can't blame it all on the field, not blaming it on the field at all. Uh, too much no. waiting for the ball and not going to it. I know that there was the one the one early pass. I want to say it was the – I know that there were three turnovers in the first four minutes, and one of them – was an outlet attempt to the left and the player on the wing, I want to say it was Della Torre, waited for the ball instead of closed the distance and it created a turnover that uh, that yielded a chance for Japan. Uh, yeah, too much waiting for the ball, not going to it. Uh, Tom Ferreira has to bury it. Uh, uh, Will is asking for false nine Geo in the second 45. Uh, two subs coming in for Japan here in the second. False nine Geo sounds like a ska band. I need y'all to know this. Yes, exactly. Uh, let's see. Pretty uh, sure they opened for uh, Goldfinger. Yes, like in 1997. Correct. Uh, Abby maintaining on Brandon Vasquez. It would have been a good time to give him some experience just to see what he looks like with the roster not set. Yeah, I don't disagree. But uh, that's that's again. This is it's Greg's team. It's Greg's decision. Yeah, you just you you you, uh, you. I mean, he's gotten you to this point, so you trust him to go with what he's got. But yeah, it's it. If if your mindset here is, we have been trying to figure out how to deal with the striker thing for so long. Mm-hmm. There was one in MLS that everybody was very excited about, but you have said no to him. Well, yes. can't help you then, Greg. Yeah, and so uh, like I said, I'm trying to look at it from that perspective as to why he was not included in the discussion. Uh, Will with our second half substitutes in Jordan Morris, Jordan Morris, Josh Sargent, McKenzie, and Cannon out Reina, Ferreira, Long, and Dest. So a full fire wagon change for Greg Bol- Berhalter here in the second 45. Yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens. Yep. Uh, yes, and uh, Pulisic got a knock in training. So yes, not available today under under any circumstance whatsoever. And so, uh, what do you what do you think about these? Uh, I know that this has also been an incredibly important topic of conversation. But what do you think about the uniforms that have been unleashed today? I hate them. They're so boring. It's like the, uh, like the they're 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 plain. They're boring. I don't enjoy them. Um, yeah, I just don't like them. Yeah, that's and, just, but that's just me. 
Yes. Um, also, That's Japan how, has how, really how, Japan has good. very good uniforms, which makes it worse. Yes. Japan always has good uniforms, though. Yes, that is true. Uh, U.S. will be working from the right to the left here in the second forty-five as we're as we're keeping an eye on things. Uh, let's see. Also, uh, Airborne DJ, based on what I saw from Wales yesterday, hanging tough with Belgium, we're in serious trouble. Maybe they shock and suddenly find form, but this is deeply concerning. Yeah, it's. Um, I don't know what to make. I still, I actually don't know what to make of Wales. So, to, to your point, like. Like Wales has those moments where they can be really fun, um, mm-hmm. but I don't know what to make of them overall. So I yeah. don't, I haven't gotten a chance to watch them outside of like the buildups to the World Cup. And we know that like for the longest time, like the 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 feeling of Wales was like, hey man, they're gonna hang around until Gareth Bale does something. Like, okay, mm-hmm. they more than that. Let's find out together. Yep. Uh, Will in his uh, kit request is is asking for an inverted Peru and river white sash on a red background. Yeah, but the Peru, yeah, I was about to say Peru's got that sash locked down to the degree that I don't want to mess with a sash because I don't want to, I don't want to like, I don't want to step on what Peru does well because I don't know that anyone can do it better than Peru, right. you know? Yeah. Um, I don't know. And like I said, I've made this point over the last, I made it with uh, Bart yesterday and uh, again this morning before you popped in. The uh, Olive and York uh, the 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 independent fan who made the the kits themselves that were picked up by Olive and York and for me obviously m- one of my favorites is one that you cannot use whatsoever in, in a World Cup situation but it's the black and gold Declaration of Independence kit. Yeah, that's the annoying part about the whole kit thing is there are so many good options Mm -hmm. the potentials the potential for kits is literally endless yes and you just went with the boilerplate yeah it's very disappointing um it's not the be all end all but it, it it is it is annoying because you had you know these runs of amazing kits for the u.s and then you just like it wouldn't be so bad if you hadn't given us the um it wouldn't be so bad if you had not given us like the waldo or even the bomb like i still have a bomb pop kit yes bomb pop kit went from being one where i was like i don't like this and then became i love this Mm -hmm. well and for me you know i'm a i'm a fan of i'm a I, i admit i'm a fan of the denim the the denim kit from the 90s but that's like i said that's just me and growing up and all this kind of stuff so uh I give me the the random elements and things like that. Uh, South Georgia says that he swears Bella would be vet, better than Sam Vine. I don't even know that. So this is a question for Burn because Burn keeps up with the uh, German divisions better than I do, um, or anyone who keeps up with the German divisions better than I do. I'm under the impression Bella hasn't been playing much at Armenia Bielefeld. Yeah. Um, so I mean, hey, uh, you want a different you want a different left back to get car- part of this conversation to bring into a camp? Maybe not a World Cup camp, but like post World Cup camp. Um, can I interest you in an Andrew Gutman for a post World Cup camp? <laughs> for like an all like not I'm not saying like for competitions, but for like we got a couple friendlies and we want to see some guys just to see what happens. Send Andrew Gutman to a camp. Let's just yeah. see what happens. There you um, go. Yeah, but my, to my knowledge, Bella hasn't played much at all at Armenia no, Bielefeld. Um, no, he has not. And especially when he got there, then you had the the coaching change and the relegation to Bundesliga Bay. And yeah, it's, it's a mess. Yeah, it's a mess. Uh, shot by Poor the Georgie. United States, blocked, and uh, back out towards center circle, and uh, the U.S. will try it all again. Uh, field looks like rugby's been on it. Well, it's in Dusseldorf, so uh, probably you've got some Fortuna, uh, Fortuna stuff that has been happening there. Yes, Abby, John is attempting to multitask and that is kind of where we are. Uh, yeah. Lennon, Lennon's already gotten called into a camp. Um, I mean, <laughs> Brooks is, if I, I, I would, I hazard, a, I, I, my, my kind of like alternate universe theory that I've, I've gone about before, like the, the, the pivot point for Atlanta United's history is Joseph blowing his ACL in 2019, started yeah. 2019. 
my alternate universe theory still bends on the idea that if Joseph doesn't do that, yeah, does Brooks Lennon put up like Gresselian numbers and Ooh, like interesting, put yeah. himself in the competition in the conversation for like you know last man into the World Cup team or that guy you're taking to stuff like Gold Cup just to see what he's got? Because then, you know, if he's working with like 2018, 2019, Joseph, is he in those conversations? Yeah. And that's the that's big as well. So 52nd minute late heading to the 53rd Japan in transition. And uh, just give me first of all, give me Kyogo for my own happiness and my own selfishness. <laughs> um, and just don't let him or. Uh, Tyson might get hurt. Oh wow, Ito with the big—that's a—that's a nasty challenge on Aronson. Dude, that okay, man? Let's talk about that real quick. Mm -hmm. I did not expect Japan to have this edge about them. Like, whoa, oh, here. oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! That's that's studs into the calf, right? Yeah, they—they they are not playing. Nay, wow. Uh, I, I, I don't know if uh, Japan's trying to be conca Cafe Coco, but, uh, they would be like falling down and stuff. But I mean, that was a nasty challenge from Ito and that got nothing other than maybe a stern talking to and a foul. Call. Yeah. That's if we're in a competitive game, that's a red. Yeah. Just hope that, uh, I want to see, I want to see what Aronson's calf looks like in post-match. And see if the uh, that that white that white sock has some added color to it. That was a nasty challenge from behind. Um, yeah, well, Abster, where, yeah, Abby's asking where Var is for that. Um, yeah, yeah Aaron, I don't know, man. Yeah, but, no, you're, but no, Tom, you're right on. Red all day if it's not a friendly. Yeah, if Ab this is a comp, if this is well, and that's the thing is like it's a friendly. You don't want those tackles in a friendly though, Jesus. Mm -mm, no. No, it's like you've got a one nil. You got a one nil lead. You've been in control most of the match, and so your your physicality that's attached to your press, and you just absolutely just rake a set of cleats over the uh, the calf of Brendan Aronson. And uh, Nick says they know he's the only real danger out there. Hack him, kick him. Polisic will get the same. Prepare yourself. And Nick's is saying that the uh, United States is not complicated. Good ball up the left hand side. Let's see what happens here. Challenged and stood up. Uh, back into the middle with Aronson and in the passing lane, but U.S. will keep possession. Um, so let's see what the U.S. does in rolling things back. Um, so the question was posted in, uh, you know, it was posted in the, uh, in the watch along from uh, Tiki Taka about Jason. And uh, Jason is three months now into fighting long COVID. And his health and welfare is the absolute number one priority, as is his uh, on-air commitment. And so uh, calling matches, big save there from Matt Turner. Because once again, Japan gets inside the 18, then they're going to recycle and try it again. Uh, long COVID is a bear. And, it's tough. and for... Uh, Jason, right now, like I said, health and welfare for him is his number one priority. As and so I know that uh, he's hoping to do some taped material down the line on when that is. But uh, obviously, thanks to everybody who continues to ask and you know send your good vibes to to Jason as he's fighting all this stuff. So uh, don't have any. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things that, like, when he's called, like, when, when Jason calls games, like, um, like Atlanta United games or whatnot, um, it's basically a matter of, like, getting himself revved up to do it. He does it, and then he kind of just, like, crashes again. Yeah. Like, you work, you work up that adrenaline to get through it, and then you just, then you go settle back down. So. Yeah. And so having to, to do that, you know, in a, for on air and competitive events and things like that right now, that's his number one priority. And so that's why, uh, you know, 
uh, Jared graciously hangs out with me every single chance that he gets as we as we uh, as we do the show at nine oh five. And Aronson's down again. And they yeah, the Japan knows. Let's take a peek at it. And here's the Ito chance. Getting a look at that with the big uh, parry by Matt Turner. But yeah, they're they're fouling Aronson. Um, and not necessarily a surprise. Um, well, I mean, and you know, like I said. Uh, oh, I'm ahead of I'm ahead of Abby's stream by 10 seconds. But well, it depends on which stream because I have uh, I'm and I'm also watching a two DNA. I'm not watching the four letter. I'm watching the two DNA version. Uh, you know, so let's be you're you're also be very careful to toe the line between like not commentating on a game. Oh, that's, that's that'll get you that'll get you dropped off the stream real damn quick. Yes, and so uh, that's why we have topics to talk about and uh, chance there. Uh, easy, easy pick and release as we get into the 58th minute. Japan still leading one nil. Uh, yeah, uh, Airborne DJ is pleased with the first 12 minutes of the the second half and what they've seen with the U.S. responding to the pressure when responding to it in kind. Um, don't know, uh, Abby. Don't know about if uh, Mike and Jason are going to be on field level for NYC on decision day. Well, as crazy as decision day is, they probably need to be upstairs. Yeah, because they need to have access to monitors and everything around them so they can keep up with standings and things like that. So um, I would say probably they need to have as many devices around them as humanly possible on decision day. And so that would mean that they would probably be back up into the booth. But that was a that was a fun experiment. It was fun to to go down and see them ahead of time and and the, the difficulties of calling a match on field level, yes, they did have monitors that were there to help them. But being right there at field level, A, it's exciting as hell to see it, especially in a game that was the way that it was against Philadelphia. But at the same time, it's very, very difficult to call when you you don't have your all 22 that you can reference. So I give them a, a hell of a lot of credit for, uh, for doing that. And yeah, Coco, the radio booth needs – well, it has its own, but you need to have like – 17 different devices going on because the way that the radio booth is, is uh, laid out, I uh, only have one streaming device uh, available switching to the game. Okay, we'll, we'll be here after for a little bit of analysis. Um, yeah, so I got like 10 minutes before I got to go. So yeah, no, yeah, no worries. And then, uh, you know, if you come back, you come back and then we'll, you know, we'll go through the final 20 and, and thoughts like that. But uh, you know, y'all actually, Coco, I don't know how Mike and Jason feel about Vertigo. Yeah, you want to get real fun? Put them in. Put them on the. Put them like in the ring around the halo board. Oh, I that, don't know how they feel about heights though. Yeah, um, but that would be that would be an interesting one. But uh, just Jason sitting there with the ultimate, uh, the ultimate technical view. Like, yes, we got the technical view of the uh, the strategic view of the game. Yeah. And uh, Abby, hard to see the play develop as well when you're elevated. Then when you're elevated upstairs, no doubt. Uh, true, Coco. Jason with his post concussion may not necessarily. Look, so that's, yeah, yeah, that's a bad thing. But um, yeah, the radio booth. The way that the radio booth is set up, Coco. Just so you know, uh, you have your audio engineer on the second level, the uh, Hall of Famer Miller Pope, or the Hall of Famer John Kramer in situations where has Miller Kramer done home games. Yeah, he did that. Last Sorry, this is this is inside this is inside production. This is uh, inside the actor studio stuff. But like, yeah. John was there to help out uh, when Jason did solo because the Falcons were on the road and Miller had oh to be God. on the road for the Falcons. Mike had moved over for play-by-play -play for TV. So John Kramer was uh, audio engineer extraordinaire for Jason in the booth when Jason did solo the other day. Okay, yeah. So this is, this is again, this is like inside the actor studio. Um, he's referencing John Kramer, who is a... Uh, it was an engineer and producer who has been working for oh God. John's probably got six. Uh, John's probably got 60, 65 years. Eh? Mm -hmm. Like on a professional side of things. Um, dude's a legend. I love that man so much. Oh yeah. And so uh, it was, <laughs> I used to, I used to travel to do Auburn uh, ESPN radio games with him mm -hmm. and could go sp spend all day at Auburn doing a game get back and go to steak and shake at like two in the morning, just cause we'd just gotten back home and didn't have anything else to do. Yeah. And, uh, so with the, uh, once again, more inside the, the actor's studio, 
I have a ritual that I do for every home match where I bring Mike, uh, I bring Jarrett when he's there. I bring Jarrett water. I bring Mike uh, Coke, zero sugar. I bring Jason Red Bull and I bring Miller Pope water as well. And so not knowing that uh, Miller wasn't going to be there, I put uh, the water on the point for John. And uh, uh, John comes in and he's doing his, he, he's getting his meal and everything. And I told him, I said, uh, I have a ritual that water is for you today. <laughs> and so he was, he was like, well, okay. Uh, and he understood that there was an idea of a ritual and uh was was obviously very very grateful for the dihydrogen oxide but not nah, yeah, was, he's, it was good. he's good people yeah it was pretty funny uh let's see yeah mount a camera up there and have that view available um the no Reese's. yeah with um <laughs> yeah, well, hey now i've got plenty of those frozen in the in the in the freezer uh mike has his own monitor on the left hand side jason has his own monitor uh jason brings his laptop for a second screen for him the booth has two television monitors above them, one directly to their left and one on the audio engineer level to keep an eye on things. And so that's the current setup. You have two monitors, you have two more down below next to you, and then Jason brings a fifth. So you could possibly have five games, uh, five different views going on at the same time if, not, if the two that are in front of them are not tied directly to uh, the actual game itself and the broadcast that's going on internally, whether it's uh, a uh, national uh, network or if it's a local network. For so decision day, you could probably bring in about another six or seven uh, monitors or so, and it would be uh, it would be very very interesting to ha see how many monitors that you could get squared away. Sixty uh, fourth minute, U.S. trying to possess deep in the attacking third. Uh, let's see what else is. Uh, it, yeah, uh, Abby, definitely. Uh, health first, no discussion until it improves. Uh, let's see. Yeah, well, Brock and uh, Brock is saying we're, we'd love to get the band back together for World Cup with uh, all of us for picks of the week of World Cup. That's a plus, yeah. That's a plus one. I like that. I'll add, yeah. a, I'll add a reaction to that. Uh, no doubt. And uh, that would be very, very cool. But once again, you know, we'll take it. Take it a step at a time and uh, continue to see what's going on. And we'll figure something out in some manner, way, shape, or form. And, you know, obviously we'll be looking at at uh, how to do things for World Cup and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, we've, got, we've got, still got a little time. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting for me because I have uh, on uh, Black Friday uh, – Black Friday is, I think, the quarterfinals for uh, high school football. So I will be at some location somewhere and keeping an eye on what's going on on Black Friday. So uh, that'll be that'll be interesting. Uh, MLS is yeah, MLS is doing uh, decision day whip around and remember all of the East Co Eastern Conference games start at one time and all of the West Conference Western Conference games started a second time uh yeah coco it'd be great to have that kind of a, a red zone kind of a deal uh in in that booth that'd be pretty cool uh, so so the rest of this game is interesting if you want a different angle of it <clears throat> look at it from the japanese perspective yeah you know the u.s is gonna push Just so this is a good game for japan to see okay we're up one nothing against a very talented side yep Woo. um it's almost a goal. <clears throat> this is a, this I is a chance for us. For, up 45 minutes against a really talented side. How do we cope with it as a team? Yeah. yeah. And so now if you're Japan, that's how you can look at it. Of how do we cope with this team? How do we how do we handle it? Matt Turner. Nice work, Matt Turner. Yeah, yeah. Um like how do we deal with it? How do how do we attack out of it? How do we handle the pressure as it continues to mount throughout the game? Because you know the US is so insanely talented. Yeah. Uh, okay, recycled set piece after the big Matt Turner save and just outside the 18 looking far post up and over. Okay, um, uh, let's see. So you, you're you kind of wandering out, aren't you? Uh, I, got, I got a few minutes. Okay. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm thoroughly entertained by all of this. Okay. Uh, 
mostly because right. it's a friendly so like if you know i mean it's 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 disappointing if it doesn't go well but it also is not gonna ruin my day right that's an, that's an, that's gonna be in november when it will ruin my day right yes and uh airborne dj one of the best things i've seen uh Recently, MLS will have more consistent times beginning next season. You need to have a red zone type show somewhere along with that. Amen, brother. Agreed. Man, you I've seen a couple people say this, Airborne, and I think you're absolutely right. It's I think it's gonna be a damn necessity almost mm-hmm. to yeah. have that going next year. I don't yeah. think you can not have it because of the way it is gonna be structured. I think it would be an absolute an uh, absolute misstep of comic proportions if they don't have one. Johnny You've set Paul. yourself up in a situation where you have to. I completely agree with you. Johnny's in for Luca Della Torre, and uh, Malik Tillman is in for Weston McKinney for the final 23 minutes. So, uh, uh, yeah, tech is available to them, and you know that uh, you hope that Apple will push the the envelope and have those kinds of things. Uh, Abby says she won't be disappointed with a one nil loss because it should be three one already. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you you were sloppy at the start. Yep. Uh, Coco is asking what the black and gold Louisiana scarf is straight back over my shoulder. So uh, let me see if I can point to it. It's uh, the crew scarf right there. Yeah, that that one there. That is Louisiana crew from. Uh, USL League Two, and what we like to do in uh, uh, off season as a part of activity here at the network is that we, you know, talk to the new guys, and it's like, okay, why did you start your franchise? What did you, what did you see? And uh, so let's see, Amitoma now in for Ito in the 69th minute for the final 20, but when. Uh, new franchises come. We always like to do the the one v ones on the network and and kind of sit there and find out about okay why why did you come up with uh, the franchise? What's your growth? You know what do you uh, you know your idea about bringing in soccer in that particular community? And crew are based in Lafayette, Louisiana, and when they came on board, it was uh, a chance to catch up and find out about another market here in the Southeast that is, is growing the game. And so we caught up with uh, the technical director and the GM, I believe. And that, that interview is up on the network, but yeah, when Louisiana crew came to pass uh, in USL league two, we caught up with them and they graciously sent a, a thank you scarf, a thank you uh, here in the form of a scarf to office HD. And so that Louisiana crew, out of uh, Lafayette, Louisiana, right there out of USL League 2. So that's what that one is. Uh, opportunity for the U.S. and the, the fresh legs are kind of pushing. And so uh, just had to get rid of it there with 20 minutes to go. And so there's the the U.S. with their fresh legs looking at things. Uh, yep. <laughs> so they're based in Lafayette. That's why I won't go to their games, LOL. Okay. Uh, good on them. Yeah. And well, so- I mean, to some people, that's not Louisiana anymore. Ah, uh, oh, okay. Explain. Uh, it's 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 a different world. Okay. Uh, so is it is it more considered more Arkansas, Texas, or Louisiana, or, or uh, Mississippi? It's 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 its own little place. Okay. Uh, yeah, Lafayette. Yeah, Lafayette in, in the Louisiana. Correct. Yes. Uh, it's early for me, Coco. I I don't have my full. Uh, See, that's, and that's how I pronounced it growing up because my uncle played at UL Lafayette. So. Yes, the the raging Cajuns. Mm -hmm. Uh, Chance with uh, 20 to go just missed at the far post by Japan. And so once again, Japan leading. uh, Are you driven from New Orleans to Lafayette? Uh, I have not. I have flown over it. That is about the yes. Do not. Yeah, don't call them UL unless uh, unless you just want to get like I don't know stabbed. (laughs) Yeah, Uh, yeah, and uh, frankly. Uh, yeah, no, don't call them UL. For me, it's always been Raging Cajuns and Jake DeLome and, and all of that stuff. But, uh, yeah, uh, Monroe, will, <laughs> Monroe will stab you, apparently, <laughs> if you call them UL. Yes, well, because of ULM, no doubt. Um, and, uh, Tom, you are spot on. If Gillette could sponsor a U.S. version of Soccer Saturday, that would be epic. And I would volunteer to be Jeff, uh, Jeff Stelling in a heartbeat. 
that would be one of the most fun things in the world. I would be Jeff Stelling, and I would sign up for that eight days a week. Absolutely. That would be that would be absolute fun to do something like that. Uh, defense having to come up for the United States. Once again, the pressure for Japan working early here in the 72nd. Reggie Cannon on defense. Header flick through the 18, and there goes uh, Japan recycling once again. Uh, like I said, we're here for the final. You're point. here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we in the collective. And so uh I'm here for the final 20 minutes. Everybody who's watching on Twitch Pitch and on Discord's here for the final 20. After the match is over, when we kind of go through review, uh, if you are in a position to return, sir, please do. Obviously. I will try. And uh, that's what we're here for. So uh, that's Jarrett Smith on his uh, Friday visit, and we will be uh, back at it with Jarrett on Monday at the very, very least as he disappears. And so what that means is that since uh, Jarrett has disappeared, I'll go ahead and cut the promo since we're – Still looking at Japan working from left to right here in the second 45. Uh, wide open space there, getting the close done uh, well done by Reggie Cannon. So it's time to read a promo. And the thing about the background music is that it always ends up lining itself up at 50%. And I don't need 50%. I need like 15%. So here we go with the promo. Once again, brought to us by our friends at Lemon Eyes for odor free, clean, fresh air. Lemon Eyes Service, proud sponsors of everything. SDH, Eliminized Service deodorizes in closed spaces like houses, apartments, and condos. They've created a customized solution that eliminizes all organic odors, including those like pets, cigarettes, and food. Realtors and property managers use Eliminized Service to eliminate bad odors to help them sell or rent their homes that much faster. The turnkey process makes it easy to work with realtors and property managers. As uh, Matt Turner gets uh, buzzed in the tower and a foul. Uh, in the buildup once again off the turnover, off the turnover. Kind of the environment, we like that these days too. It's a very green way to get rid of odors without any kind of toxic residue whatsoever. Different than Febreze or our favorite masking agents because uh, when we have said masking agents either in the cupboard above us or in the sink below in the, the cabinet underneath the sink, when we open the door, to the cabinet underneath the sink or to the cupboard above us. When we pull out that masking agent, that's all they are. They're a masking agent. When you spray them in the air, all they're doing is masking the odor. They're not attacking the problem all the way down to the molecule like our friends at Lemonized Service do with their proven scientific formula. Pricing very, very easy. One of two ways, either by the cubic footer parts per million to come up with a price that is affordable for you, offering results in 24 hours or less. You have any questions frequently asked or otherwise one place that you need to go it's a lemonized service and the uh, website right there and i've actually shaded the uh the banner where it's not reflected in the lights here in the office you can actually see the web address plus the qr code for those of you watching on twitter so your homework assignment eliminize.com but after the dot com goes slash atlanta so they know what part of the world that you are addressing them from so they can help you attack your problems so it's E-L-I-M-I-N-I-Z-E dot com slash Atlanta. Eliminize dot com slash Atlanta. For odor-free, clean, fresh air, Eliminize service, proud sponsors of everything SDH. As we keep an eye on what's going on at uh, Dusseldorf Arena with uh, the early goal by Japan. And they have had a 1-0 lead over the United States since the 24th minute. And the goal that was initially called offside, then uh, it was... Uh, registered at VAR with onside. Uh, so, yes, Matt Turner, Abby on a Discord. A good game, thank goodness. Why do most other teams make subs between 65 and 70, and we do ours at 75? Not looking at players in the middle to pass to, one on the rim. Um, that is, I mean, it's, Abby, when it comes to substitutions, mainly more than anything, it's it's you, one of two things. It's either feel or it is something that you have, you know, registered on the clock and chance there over the bar by Japan. And uh, the opportunity was there for their second goal of the, of the match with 15 to go. Last touched uh, by the U.S. and it'll be a corner coming up. So we'll see what happens after that. But it, it legitimately is feel sometimes. And when you're in the rhythm of the game and uh, I know that uh We've discussed Greg Berhalter in the past where he has been in CONCACAF situations where he's been too late in his substitution pattern. 
And that is, it's, it's been a concern for a lot of fans when it's like, uh, how does, how that Burhalter is somewhat slow to react when the team that he's going up against subs and they adjust to the game. And then Burhalter is then in turn slow in reacting to that as well. So, uh, you know, how do you, how do you react? And then once again, how does, how does your opponent react? And then how do you react when your opponent reacts? And so, uh, legitimately, sometimes it's feel, but here I'm guessing because it is a friendly, uh, yeah, uh, Modiflower, yeah, you know, Japan has been pressing and, uh, it has been, it has been a challenge, but it's been the challenge that, uh, that you want really when it comes to these friendlies. But, uh, back to the original point real quick, cause you know, with me, when I'm looking at, uh, squirrel and, and when i'm looking at twitch pitch and i'm looking at discord it, it literally is squirrel and i'm like yeah um yeah so and i think that probably my guess is here is that you have a set idea in your mind since it's a friendly and you're getting ready for the game in four days in, in mercy of spain that you want to give certain guys a certain number of minutes and then with run of play you may have to it may end up being a couple of minutes later uh you know, a couple of minutes later that you can try to get a substitution in. So uh, I'm guessing that it's something akin to a something akin to a pitch count. And it's like, all right, these guys are going to get this number of minutes. These guys are going to get this number of minutes. Here's my substitutions. Uh, so that's what I'm thinking, at least anyway. Abby, I'm looking at, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that the, the idea is because you've got a game in four days, you're giving certain guys a certain number of minutes. And then you're going from there. And so it's just uh, you're giving you're giving your starters a look. Then you're bringing in guys to help with either slight game flow slash number of minutes because you've got a game in four days. And so uh, that was uh, corner and uh, Matt Turner comes up with the save. So uh, 79th minute doubt very seriously since it's a friendly you're going to have any kind of of uh, added time to this whole thing. So. Uh, if we do, I will be somewhat surprised. Uh, so we'll keep a, you know, so we'll keep an eye on that. I don't anticipate, like I said, I don't anticipate a whole lot of added time with subs and things like that. Maybe with injuries, really, if it was me, I would be, you know, no added time. There you go. We're done in yeah, 90 minutes. Everybody's healthy short of Brendan Aronson after he got that slash to the calf, uh, a handful of minutes ago. So, uh, you know, keep an eye obviously on Brendan Aronson. Does uh, see what his calf looks like after the match. Uh, U.S. trying to chase after an equalizer, uh, defended by Japan with uh, 11 to go, and they will get a throw in the attacking third. Uh, yeah, haven't done any since half. We're in the 77th. They well, uh, they just did uh, just did a couple of subs with uh, Johnny and Malik Tillman. So. Uh, Let's see. Pass through in Japan ends up with possession. Burhalter out. Is it too late? Yeah. Yes, Nick. Unfortunately, it's too late if you're uh, not a fan of 3GB. Um, but, you know, like I said, I just want out of these out of this window, first and foremost, I want everybody healthy more than anything. And after that, uh, I'm looking for growth. So I want to see, and this was, this was a solid, this was a solid test for the U S today. And you want them to face things that aren't familiar. You want your players to face things that aren't familiar. So that way they learn how to adjust in game state with stuff, you know, wearing a, in national team duty where you want them to do something different. And so that's what, uh, um, but we failed the test. Uh, it's still Nick's. It's still going on. It's not. It's not a test that uh, you have failed yet because you're not in Qatar yet. And so it's. I'm looking at growth, and so how do you respond? I think that in the first ten or fifteen minutes, and a shot there was just wide, uh, Aronson. So Aronson on the cutting back and forth. Schmidt was fooled. He couldn't keep up with it, but Aronson did send it wide. Um, look for growth in this window. I would be concerned when you get to Qatar and you show that you didn't learn, that would be a, a bigger concern for me. Um, learn from where you are and put yourself in unfamiliar situations so you can learn. So uh, you've got an unfamiliar situation today, Japan pressing, 
uh, center backs having to play out of the back and learn from it. That's what I want. I want you to learn from today as a unit and then as individuals and then work your way forward from there. So that's, yes, I know that the, the numbers are going to be lopsided. Yes, I know that that's going to really be uh, disappointing slash disturbing, whatever whatever word you would like. And I can't, I, I want to see what those numbers are, frankly. Um, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see what the final numbers are at, uh, so at sofa score by the time that uh, we, uh, we we get everything all laid out. Uh, also on, uh, let's see. So we'll go through some of the, uh, the other matches today and see what else is on the board. Uh, get you ready for, the other viewing, since you're looking at uh, a lot of a lot of matches today, perhaps uh, soccer on TV today. Once again, courtesy of our friends at Soccer America, uh, you've got men's soccer on the ACC network. You've got Nations League FS2 at noon, FS1 at 2:45 with Germany and Hungary. Liga MX doubleheader tonight at seven and ten. Nakaxa Mazatlan, Puebla, and Pumas uh, ACC extra has men's college soccer tonight or yeah tonight at seven out of football has uh french one uh french uh, division one arkema with montpellier and Lyon. uh espn plus obviously they're going to be stacked you've got games in the usl championship tonight friday night football you've got three we'll go into juice boxes coming up in just a little bit uh charleston rgv You've got uh, Tampa Bay, Birmingham at 7.30, shot by uh, Japan just wide as they had another chance in the 83rd minute. And uh, Aronson is down, and he is grabbing his knee. Looks like it was was that knee-to-knee contact toward a center circle. Once again, we'll keep an eye on that. But, yeah, I mean, Nick, you had the point early that he's going to be the, the number one target for folks uh, to try to, to knock off his pin. So we'll keep an eye on. Uh, Aronson, Aronson's up, uh, trying to walk it off with the left knee. Uh, Loose City in Memphis, 901 at 8 o'clock. That's, your, that's the one to uh, really keep an eye on with uh, action in the USL Championship. Men's and women's uh, soccer on ESPN Plus really starting at 4 o'clock. Fox Soccer Plus has a UEFA Nations League at noon and 245. Fubo Sports Network has Nations League at 245. Pay-per-view, Nations League of Italy and England. VIX has... Seven matches in Nations League starting at noon. So that's your your look at uh, all of the activity to keep your Friday very, 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 very busy. And uh, getting into uh, juice boxes as we go here late in the 84th minute, uh, we'll take a look at what the numbers are with all of your action uh, yesterday in Nations League I know that uh, a lot of folks France had five players leave because of injuries of various degrees including uh, Memphis Depay he was a part of that group in Nations League uh, as we're talking right now you've got a bunch of friendlies going on uh, that have either concluded or are still going whether it's U19s what have you Eastern Europe is going on right now team friendlies are, are happening as well uh, we're getting into a Middle Eastern and North Africa play, uh, kicking off at uh, 11 o'clock. You've got uh, world friend. You've got more friendlies happening starting at 11:30. Uh, elites and Euros. Uh, since we mentioned the matches at noon in Nations League, Georgia is a favorite against North Macedonia at a plus 112. Estonia is a favorite at a plus 102 against Malta at a plus 317. Paraguay in the UAE is at noon. Paraguay is a minus 169. Uruguay is a minus 122 hosting Iran. And you have uh, Germany and France U21s going at it at noon as well. Uh, Eastern Europe continues in the early afternoon. You have uh, Canada and Qatar at 1 o'clock. Canada is a minus 133. Qatar is a plus 350. It will be an interesting test for John Herdman. I would take the draw option probably at a plus 267. Uh, Pressure from Japan after the United States grabbed a turnover and slop. And that's that pitch is very, very sloppy on the edges once you get past the crown. And so in the 86th minute, it is still uh, one nothing Japan. National League in France in the early afternoons. Uh, you've got uh, 
as they uh, look at another play, look at the first goal on the board for the day. Uh, Saudi Arabia, Ecuador. Ecuador's at a minus 135 at 2 o'clock. Egypt is playing Niger. Jordan is playing Syria. All of those are at 2. Nations League, 245. Bulgaria, big, yeah. I'm looking forward to the Canadian match as well, Abby. Uh, Bulgaria is a minus 625 with Gibraltar. Finland, a plus 129 with Romania. Romania is at a plus 234. Bosnia Herzegovina is a minus 114 against Montenegro. The Montenegrins are a plus 350. Italy and England, your marquee match at uh, 245. England a plus 143. Your draws a plus 217. Italy is a plus 215. And uh, foul by Japan. And uh, another player for the U.S. is down. Let's see who that was. Uh, Walker Zimmerman. Uh, after contact. So we'll keep an eye on uh, Walker Zimmerman, who is now up. Uh, Germany, Hungary is a minus 345. Germany is, th- is that number. Your draws a plus 480. Hungary is a plus 850. All of those are at 245. We'll go over the action that happened yesterday and the positions of everybody. Uh, friendlies, Algeria, Guinea's at three. Morocco is a, a home underdog slightly with Chile at uh, three o'clock as well. Uh, you're getting into South America, Central America at six o'clock. Huracan and Bonfield, Huracan in Argentina is a minus 114. Uh, give you the uh, Canada match. I think that was a one o'clock, Abby, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, Canada Qatar is at one o'clock, so we'll keep an eye on that one. Yes, thank you, Nick. Um, always having my back. Uh, six o'clock. Argentina, Huracan and Bonfield, Huracan's minus 114 in Japan. Just got another goal on the board, so it is a 2-0 margin right now in the 88th minute late, and it looks like the sub, Mitoma, is going to get credit for the goal here. Build up off the left-hand side, cutting it in between a couple of defenders, launch past Turner, no doubt. Uh, Yep, Mitoma got past a couple of defenders, uh, Adams and Cannon, and Walker Zimmerman was there as well, but well-placed around Walker Zimmerman. Matt Turner couldn't get to it, and so it's 2-0, so Mitoma with the second goal in the 89th minute. Uh, so that is uh, 2-0 for Japan with a handful of minutes to go. Uh, Godoy Cruz in Boca Juniors. Godoy Cruz a plus 147, and your draw is a plus uh, 214. No doubt, Abby. I know they are missing miles in the back. But uh, once again, it was built up on the left-hand side, and they, they uh, cut it through a couple of defenders, cut it past uh, uh, it was uh, Reggie Cannon and uh, Tyler Adams to get to Walker Zimmerman. And Zimmerman, it was just well-placed around Zimmerman to get it past Matt Turner as well. Uh, Liga MX Femenil at 6 o'clock. Pumas at a plus 378. Chivas at a minus 141. USL Championship, Charleston, a big home underdog as RGV comes to Patriots Point at 7 uh, Canadian Premier League's at 7.30. Tampa Bay, Birmingham. This is another big one at Al Lang. Tampa Bay, a decided favorite at a minus 149. Birmingham, a plus 337. Uh, Liga MX at 8. Nakaksa Mazatlan. Nakaksa is a minus 102. Mazatlan's a plus 274. Your draws a plus 243. Uh, Tigres, a big favorite in Liga MX Femenil against Juarez. Lou City in Memphis. I think your match of the night in a USL Championship and also for uh, late action as well. 8 o'clock. Lou City at home, minus 169. Your draw is a plus 287. Memphis is a plus 395. We caught up with Philip Goodrum from Memphis 901 FC earlier in the week. That one's on the network. You can catch uh, you can catch uh, some uh, numbers there. You can catch that interview. Very, very cool to catch up with Philip. And uh, late night in Liga MX at 10.05 Puebla is a plus 114 with uh, your draw with Pumas at a plus 250, Pumas is at a plus 218. Now, we, I wanted to get into Nations League just to get everybody uh, squared away with how things were. So uh, yesterday, just to kind of get everybody caught up, it was uh, Belgium a winner, Croatia a winner, France shuts out Austria as a big favorite, Netherlands beat Poland. Uh, also, in uh, lower leagues, Lithuania, a draw with Faroe Islands. Azerbaijan, a win over Slovakia. Turkey, Luxembourg had a six-goal thriller. Uh, League D, Andorra, a win. Moldova, a win on the road with Latvia. So uh, standings were going into League A today, and there is a lot of thought with the, the match finally over. As always, no, uh, no added time, so no real surprise. Uh, League A. 
Croatia right now in Group 1 leads Denmark 10 points to 9. France has 5. Austria has 4. Group 2, Spain, 8 points. Portugal with 7. Czech Republic with 4. Switzerland with 3. Okay, now that the match is over, go ahead and send in your thoughts on the Twitch pitch and on the Discord, and we'll talk through them here uh, with what we saw in the, in the, fi- in the first uh, 90 minutes of the U.S. in this window before they go to Mercy of Spain on the 27th. Group 3. They've only played four matches as well. Hungary, seven points. Germany with six. Italy with five. England, through four matches, only has two points. Remember, the fourth-place team in each of these groups gets relegated. And uh, the uh, the, uh, players for England, when they were asked about it, Jack Grealish specifically said, yeah, it's something that we know it's there. uh, And we do think about it, but it doesn't – I'm paraphrasing. It doesn't consume every single uh, thought in their head. So – uh, that's what you're looking at there. Group four has played five matches of the six. Netherlands with 13 points. They haven't lost yet. Belgium with 10. They've won three of their last four. Poland and Wales uh, are the ones in danger of being sent down to League B. So that's how that looks there. Uh, forgot to ask Jared about uh, what's been going on in Scotland with uh, Jim Goodwin getting uh, uh, a bit of a finger wag at him from the Scottish FA. So we'll get into that and look at the papers coming up in just a bit. Uh, yeah, uh, South Georgia, quote, well, that sucks. And uh, Abby, no scoring outside of the U.S. in 2022. That's not good at all. Uh, so, yeah, guys, uh, let me know what you thought about uh, the match in and of itself. I know that when uh, the stats come full, uh, we'll get into uh, uh, the stats if uh, we can – Dig them up and sit there and see what uh, what what's being looked at here with uh, all of the numbers. So uh, Kamada scored in the 24th. The assist went to Morita. Uh, then uh, Mitoma scored with the assist to Nakayama in the 88th. So you had uh, uh, six substitutions for the U.S. at the half. Uh, with from the starting lineup, it was. Uh, Reina Ferreira, Long and Dest out. Morris, Sergeant McKenzie, and Reggie Cannon in. Uh, you had Luca De La Torre subbed for Johnny in the 67th, along with Malik Tillman coming in for Weston McKinney. So we'll we'll look at the look at the stats when they come posted. But yeah, just let me know what you guys thought about. I know what you guys thought, but also uh, looking at uh, everything else that you guys thought about the match in and of itself. At Modaflo, it is a terrible stat. No scoring outside the United States in uh, 2022. Um, let's see, where was I? Oh, uh, papers. So we'll get into the news of the day and see what is going on with everything going on overseas. Obviously, uh, Bellingham and Maguire look like they're in line to start. Ivan Tony is not in the squad against Italy. So we'll keep that in mind today. Uh, England in trouble. Scotland might come up from group B. Uh, also... Uh, if you haven't seen it, yeah, this is a little fun note for the day. If you haven't seen it, Jose Mourinho made his music video debut in a cameo in Storm in Stormzy's new video, referencing his infamous post-match interview about uh, uh, in 2014, and you get to see Jose Mourinho shushing in it, Stormzy's new video. Very, very funny. Very, very cool. Um, Transfer Center. All right, let's get into that and kind of see what we've got here. A uh, huge scramble among agents to sign uh, Premier League record breaker Ethan Monieri, who at 15 and 181 days became the youngest player to appear. Big name agents are keen to snap him up, while reports in Nigeria suggest the Super Eagles are also chasing him as he's eligible through his dad, Obi. Monieri appeared for the England under 16s. Arsenal want to tie him down for the long term. Watford forward Joe Pedro has put over any doubts about his future, signing a new six year contract with the Hornets. Uh, Arsene Wenger is confident that uh, Arsenal can win the uh, Premier League title this year. They have a good chance of being uh, uh, champions. He was asked about that in an interview on Sky. Uh, Birmingham teenager Job Bellingham signed his first professional deal on his 17th birthday. Brother of Jude, Birmingham accept an uh, undisclosed contract offer in July when he signed this month after he turned 17. Uh, let's see. Uh, Hamza Chowdhury can become an inspiration, according to Watford head coach Rob Edwards. Uh, Lauborough born England U21 
uh, opened the door to the possibility of playing for Bangladesh in an interview. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that for uh, Hamza Chowdhury. Kylian Mbappe has made a thinly veiled dig at PSG, claiming he has more freedom, in quotation marks, when playing in the French national team than he does at the club level. France's 2-0 win over Austria. Uh, he scored the opener before Olivier Giroud sealed the win with a header. After the match, he, uh, Mbappe said, what they ask of me here is different. Here I have much more freedom than at PSG. The coach knows that there is a nine, like Giroud, and so I can move and go to space. In Paris, it is different. They ask me to play pivot, although I enjoy playing everywhere. Uh, Tomiyasu, uh, speaking of uh, Japan, Tomiyasu has spoken out against his lack of first-team football at Arsenal. Uh, he found himself in the club's first choice right back following his 16 uh, million pound move from Bologna. 21 appearances in his maiden Premier League season, but Ben White is now right back this season, and they've got six wins in their first seven. Tomiyasu said, what is required in this league is quite high, and I'm not satisfied. When you look at the players selected as starters in the Premier League games, you will understand what is required to be there. I will work hard in order to get my position back. Arteta has uh, praised both of them, both White and Tomiyasu, uh, so far this season. Uh, from The Guardian and their Manchester football correspondent, Jamie Jackson, uh, quote, not a surprise to see Gareth Southgate come out in support of Harry Maguire as he's been impeccable for England. He was uh, in the side which took England to a World Cup semi in the final of the European Championship. Lost his place at Manchester United. It was a big call from Eric Ten Hag, but not too surprising. Did think it would be Varane and Lissandro Martinez at first choice. Southgate saying it's okay, as it's only a few games after preseason. Uh, former Wales defender Sam Ricketts was asked about Gareth Bale, and uh, Ricketts said that Bale needs to manage his playing time to ensure he remains fit for FIFA in Qatar. Belgian forward Eden Hazard said he was starting to find his form again after 65 minutes in the win over Wales, admitted he needed more game time at Real Madrid before the World Cup, uh, barely featured for Real, something he has called a delicate situation by his own admission thrown in his place at the finals in Qatar in doubt. But uh, he says, I know what I can do. And now I want to get in shape for the World Cup. We'll see what the coach, Roberto Martinez, decides, but I'm happiest when I play. Um Let's see. Paul Robinson of the Daily Express has warned Tottenham cha chairman Daniel Levy he faces being, quote, held to ransom, end quote, if the club cannot persuade Harry Kane to sign a new contract in the next 12 months as links with Bayern Munich continue to swirl. Patrice Evra has revealed Wayne Rooney and Paul Scholes were among the Manchester United players who thought the club had signed a five and a half million pound flop when he struggled in the early stages of his move in Monaco in 2006. The signing of Lionel Messi, according to the Daily Mirror, uh, has generated PSG and an extra 700 million euro, 612 million pounds in income due to commercial deals. Not a surprise there. Uh, Daily Telegraph, Thomas Tuchel has been left in post-Brexit visa limbo over his ability to remain in the United Kingdom following his sacking from Chelsea. Elliot Anderson could swap his international allegiance from Scotland to England after his recent rise at Newcastle United. Uh, also in the papers, avoiding the three-letter paper and the four-letter paper. Uh, Daily Star, Tottenham fans reacted in disbelief on social media after Pierre-Emile Hoiberg injured his club uh, teammate Ivan Perisic during Denmark's class with Croatia. Perisic had to be substituted after what was looked at as a 50-50 tackle. Um, let's see, Daily Express, we mentioned that one. Uh Mirror, former Barcelona boss Ronald Koeman has claimed he was blocked from signing ex-Liverpool star Gigi Wijnaldum. Uh, PK had a special clause in his Barcelona contract to ensure that he earned more money than Sergio Ramos. And the Independent has Manchester United's uh, football director John Murtaugh insisting the level of spending seen this summer will not be repeated by the club after the wage bill hit record levels. Uh Everton and Scotland, according to The Athletic, waiting to discover the extent of, of uh, the injury to uh, Nathan Patterson after the defender was carried off on a stretcher while on international duty. And the U.S. soccer is seeking to join the UEFA working group in supporting compensation for workers at the Qatar World Cup. So uh, Liam Fox set to be named as the new Dundee United boss. 
and former Celtic uh, Joshua Bradley Hurst faces a 5,500 mile trip for training after being handed an unlikely international chance from Sri Lanka. So we'll keep an eye on that stuff as well. So that's your tour through the papers. That is your tour through uh, uh, all the, the news of the day. Uh, Abby Aronson gave full effort. Turner, and that's who gave full effort in his opinion. I miss what Greg Berhalter said, as did I. Uh, uh, programming note on TV, it looks like in partnership with Out of Football, CBS Sports Network is going to air live linear English language coverage of European women's soccer matches across the D1 Arkema in France, the Frauen Bundesliga in Germany, Serie A Feminile in Italy, and it starts with PSG and FC Fleury 91 Sunday live on CBS Sports Network. So um, we'll keep an eye on that. Very, very cool stuff as well. Uh, let's see. Uh, Nashville made their hires for their next pro franchise in Huntsville, Alabama. Ian Air slides over as president, and they also had another hire as well. So uh, Ian Air getting, getting to uh, add stuff to the resume when it comes to all of that. Um, Let's see. Also on the board, I'm trying to continue to work my way through here and see if there's anything else uh, looking for looking for stats and see if there's any kind of final statistic here with uh, everybody. Let's see. We just have don't have like stat stats and if and I need to find stat stats but uh we'll probably talk about uh, Japan USA stats on the discord and I know Abby Aronson's getting a lot of praise Matt Turner stood uh, stood up a couple of times uh and kept it from being more than two goals for Japan one in the first half in the 24th and then the one in the late 80s with a minute to go as we continue to work forward there Abby uh, good to see you. Thanks for hanging out in both the Discord and in the Twitch pitch this morning. And that was kind of what the idea was to to kind of talk through this particular match and see what uh, what the United States was looking like. And so we'll uh, we'll once again regroup and kind of see what's up with uh, the United States and what they learned from here as uh, we you know work our way forward. Uh, a lot of folks once again. Okay, so uh, possession, uh, 58-42 by the U.S. Shots were 16-4 to by Japan. No shots on goal. Eight corners for uh, Japan and only two for the United States. So um, let's see. Uh, Burhalter was asked a question after the match. He says, for some reason, I didn't see a lot of personality with our performance today. So, uh, so we'll see how they respond to that. That's the uh, the biggest the, the biggest issue here. How do you respond? You want to challenge yourself, and that's a point that we've been making this morning. You want to challenge yourself here, and so we'll see how the U.S. responds to that challenge coming up after this, with a couple of uh, a couple of games coming through here in the remainder of the window. And I know a lot of you mentioned that uh, that you're missing Miles Robinson. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. Let's see what the lineup changes are and see what the continuity is in a couple of days' time. Because remember, uh, Brendan Aronson uh, really was pushed around a lot today. And he also got spiked, which would have been a red outside of uh, any other normal circumstance. If this wasn't a friendly, that should have been a red. Uh, Brendan Aronson knocked around, uh, got a bit of a knock to the left knee, as did uh, Walker Zimmerman. Was it that playing surface at Dusseldorf? Because that was uh, – that was. That was a pretty juicy surface, and I don't mean that in a good way, especially once you got past the crown and worked your way to the the outer edges that really looked really chewed up. So we'll see how uh, the U.S. responds once again. And no, the numbers weren't great, but I'm choosing to look at it as a a learning situation. Uh, What are your combinations? What do you do when you have folks who are put in unfamiliar situations? That's what this window for me is all about. If somebody's going to give you something unfamiliar, how do you respond? Do you learn from it and move forward? That's the hope. And so that's uh, that's what we're hunting for here. Once again, everybody, thanks for hanging out today. And th- thanks for uh, uh, putting up with me and, uh, you know, trying to figure out. Uh, yeah, close, Abby. You know, I swear you're playing in the rain with the amount of dirt on the uniforms. That's not wrong. But, uh, you know, thanks for doing this uh, almost watch along analysis. Look at the weekend hybrid kind of a thing. But. Uh, 2-0 loss for the United States uh, against Japan. 
and they get to have their next match in this window in a couple days' time. And so we'll all see how the U.S. responds to this today and the lessons that were posed by Japan. And they were some very stout lessons that were posed by a team that is going to be a very tough out in international competition. So uh, once again, thanks to all of y'all for hanging out. Thanks to uh, uh, Jarrett for hopping in. Once again, we'll come back on Monday. And we will set up the action on Tuesday, if my math is right, 24, 25, 20. Yeah, so Bart will be here on Monday. And as I've said, as I've told the Bart Keeler, the forbidden door is always open. So if Bart wants to come in and crash, he can do so. But uh, I anticipate Bart Keeler coming in 930 Monday morning. And we're also trying to line up some other guests as well as we head toward uh, the final couple of weeks of the uh, Major League Soccer season. Uh, great to have Nico Moreno on yesterday and uh, have his perspectives as well. So Dylan Butler will be on next Wednesday. Nico Moreno will be with us for Thursdays with Nico on Thursday, shooting uh, to try to have some other special guests as well, as well during the Monday at 9.30 slots all next week and 9 o'clock. And so we'll see what happens with all of those. So once again, thanks for hanging out here on uh, SDH on a Friday, and we will continue to roll forward here. And since it is the end of the show... That means I get to do this. Mucha plata, y'all. Have a very safe and happy weekend. We'll catch up with you on Monday, where I'm sure we'll be talking about this a lot.